gently. Dave Brown right along ringside all ready to go with the big day of championship wrestling and boy I'll tell you we got a hearty few here Dave for those of you around the circuit that do not know and there's not no too many people is the number one uh, weatherman in the entire Mid-South and boy I'll tell you I'm not blaming you for this because I know how many people do on it but we got ice out there on the streets and I don't think we're by ourselves uh, it's true uh, a lot of the territory ended up uh, sometime this week with a little coating of ice followed by a little bit of snow there so travel has been kind of hazardous and we're glad the uh, these folks here we appreciate your yeah. attendance yeah. <laughs> yeah we got a great show for uh, for you and also for you coming up here today Max Payne is going to be in teamed with gorgeous Gary Young and that's just in the opening match today. Let me insert right here and now that the big news of the day and the big announcement is the fact that we have a new CWA heavyweight champion mm -hmm. Max Payne defeated Jerry Lawler for the title and the painkiller is now the CWA heavyweight title and he'll be here as part of a tag team also the former champion himself the King Jerry Lawler will be in a little bit later All on right. today we'll also be looking at the Samoans huge team the team of the great Samu and the giant Coquina will be in a bit later on Jimmy Jack Funk will be here too all in all looks like a most interesting Boy, day. I'll tell you one thing we didn't slow down in terms of talent we got a bunch of it to Today you'll be meeting uh, the great Samu and the giant Coquino for the very first time. You'll be seeing them here in our championship wrestling ch television program. We'll be looking for them and everybody else right after we take time out for this. just a moment we'll be seeing the uh, AWA Southern Tag Champions uh, gorgeous Gary Young and Max Payne who happen to be coming out right now as a matter of fact. well we're not we're not meeting and greeting with any kind of great joy uh, brother Ernest and his team out here hey just well, just well get it right up on the table front right now I want to tell you we received a lot of complaints and all about you making fun of religion oh now wait a minute wait a minute brother Russell I have never said that I was a pastor I have never said that I was an ordained minister I have never said anything like that I called you brother because we all are descendants of Adam and Eve, so we're all brothers and sisters. If right. you belong to the Kiwanis Club or the Lions Club, any civic organization, you refer to someone as brother. Yeah. Aren't you and I brothers? Well, okay, now, okay. Now, what about it, brother? Well, okay, I'll tell you what about it. You come out here and, and get behind a pulpit to start well, doing Now, wait a minute. There again, there you're casting aspersion. That wasn't a pulpit. That was here from the television station. You mean to tell me if we go down here to have a press conference, Conference at the Holiday Inn or at any hotel in town, they're going to have a podium in front of us. Do you know the difference between podium and yeah, pulpit? Yeah, yeah, I know. And uh, okay, you may, I see it right here. What? Carrying a Bible around Where here and trying to. Brother Russell, where does it say Bible? I say good book. Good book. Do you know what a good book is? Uh, but probably uh, instead of a, uh, uh, a, a, a literary commentary, uh, you could do you could do an illiterate commentary. <laughs> Very funny. Illiterate, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what you're saying is that all you're doing is representing a cause, huh? Brother Russell, I have a cause. I received yeah. a calling. I received a calling 
a calling. A calling can come through on a telephone. It can come through anywhere. It can be, you know, spiritual. It can be through a telegram. Anyway, I received a calling to clean up wrestling in the Mid-South area and what they're having to go through. In fact, I've even got somebody in mind for your job. You're yeah, one of them just yeah, like them. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, you're one of them just like them the way I feel well, about it. And there's as you a lot can of see by the belts on my boy's back, I'm it certainly ready. didn't take me long, yeah. did it? We've got, we've got power somewhere. I've got power somewhere. Somewhere. You've got the Southern Tag Belts and the CWA Heavyweight Championship Belts. Okay, Brother Ernest, if you don't mind, we're into the ring right here. We've got ourselves a match coming up. It won't take long. Stand by, Brother Russell. Okay, Davey. All right, this is going to be a one-fall, 10-minute time limit tag team match, introducing at a total weight of 435 pounds. Out of Dallas, Texas, Rodney Knapper, and out of Arkansas, Alan Reynolds, going against him at a total of 553 pounds. From Houston, Texas, gorgeous Gary Young. Yeah. And out of Salt Lake City, Utah, Max Payne, the overlord. This is going to be a one-fall, ten-minute time limit match. Jerry Calhoun, the referee, and Brother Ernest Angel is in the corner of Max Payne and Gary Young over there. Yeah, he is. He's right about one thing. It didn't take these guys long to uh, come up with some some prize belts uh, together. Young and Max Payne hold the AWA Southern Tag Championship belt. Uh, Max Payne, as we've already announced, is the CWA heavyweight title holder as he took that belt from the team. Alan Reynolds trying to fight his way back, but boy, oh boy, this guy is so big and tough. Look at this. Boom. What do you think, Brother Russell? What do you think, Brother Russell? Do you see the power? Do you see the power that the boys have? <laughs> Well, I tell you, 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 your cause of cleaning up wrestling is certainly not well represented by the team of uh, big knee in the midsection on Allen Reynolds. It's not too well represented by Gary Young and Max Payne. No, I think they uh, they looked up cleaning up in a different dictionary from the one most of us use. Ooh. Dropping with a huge knee. Rodney Knapper has not as yet made his appearance in there because they have really been shattering. Alan Reynolds, head into the knee. The referee comes over. There's a head back into the turnbuckle, and that gives Knapper a chance to make his first visit in there. And I'm not so certain I would want to be in there if I were uh, having to face the prospect of catching Gary Young or, and Max Payne. Turned him over with a closed line. Good, good boy. When he got him, he landed right on his head and the back of his neck. Big Max Payne. This guy's huge and powerful. You know, and the thing that makes him uh, so deadly dangerous, Dave, is a guy does have legitimately an amateur background. It's unbelievable. He was three times an All-American for the NCAA. Drops with a big elbow down there. And Rodney Knapper has been mashed down on the mat as Big Max Payne again picks him up off the mat. Slams him down. Tag on gorgeous Gary Young. Payne just picks, picks Young up like a feather and drops him down on top of it. As Rodney Knapper is right there about to enter the twilight zone. Man, oh man, is he taking a beating in a very short period of time. Knapper gets through, goes up with a drop kick and has, look at that, no effect again. He's firing away at the 300 pound plus Max Payne. Boys have power. They have the power. There's no way. Yeah, I wish you'd put the power for the kind of look at that big splash on Napper. He is laying down flat, and the referee saying, "Go ahead and make the pin." Starts to count again. One, two, and uh, Gary Young hollering from the outside takes the tag from Max Payne. What is this? Oh, I see. Look what a buddy I am. I'm going to let you have the pin. Okay, three minutes, 25 seconds the time on it. 325. Okay.
Okay, serious win by the team of gorgeous Gary Young and Max Payne, the big pain killer. As uh, Napper and Alan Reynolds try as they would, they were just flat not into the match. That's all there is to it, going against too much. Boy, these guys may be with us for a while. Yeah, Very so. thought, yeah. Hey, right now, Renegade Rampage Trivia Time. You know, every week, and let me get this uh, clear in your mind in case this is the first time you've heard it, we're going to have the Renegade Rampage is uh, a tournament that is going to be running over like an 18-week period. It will run into June. There will be individual single matches, points awarded for the win by pin, win by disqualification, draw, whatever. The guys accumulate points, and at the end of the time, there's going to be finals, and those who qualify will participate. The total overall money we're talking about is $250,000 over the period up through June. So everybody has got their eye on it, and certainly every time they go in one of those matches, they're thinking big time, boy, when you start talking about that kind of a payoff in there. In connection with that, we have weekly a Renegade Rampage trivia question. Now, all of the folks who were able to send in the correct answer to it, those answers are put into a hopper and a name is drawn out of it only from the correct answers. And that person wins the weekly prize, which is a very nice Renegade Rampage jacket, the Renegade Rampage t-shirts, and a set of uh, six uh, Renegade mugs that go with That's the weekly prize. But more important, really, than the weekly prize, and those items are very, very nice, comes the qualification for the finals. And that means that the person who is the final victor out of the 18 weekly winners is going to receive a trip to the site of the finals for the Renegade Rampage. They will have the expense money. They will be having the uh, hotel accommodations, tickets to the uh, final matches, and $500 spending money. So, right. all right, that gets everybody's <laughs> attention in there. We're going to give you the address in a little while, but you must uh, be able to get it in, have the correct answer, and there will be a winner select that out of it. I want to announce the name of the winner. Last week, our trivia contest question had to do with the nicknames for Dave and myself. And uh, the winner from all of the names that uh, were correct in it, selected, was David Davidson. David Davidson. Number two, Ball Road, Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, let's see, last week we had Louisville, didn't we? We had a, had a lady from Louisville, Louisville was the winner. Correct. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. And David Davidson, Memphis, Tennessee, the winner for our uh, contest from last week in there. The nicknames were Banana Nose and Howdy Doody, as coined by Sam Bass yeah. and Jerry the King Lawler. Yeah. Uh, so in case you're wondering what it is, uh, that was the correct answer. Okay, let's take a look at the question for this particular week. We have our third question. During his career, Eddie Marlin had his greatest success with what tag partner? I don't want to hear it, so don't anybody <laughs> say anything about it. During his career, Eddie Marlin had his greatest success with what tag partner? Okay, let's take a look now at the address Renegade Rampage must be on trivia contest, must be on your envelope. Send it to WMC TV 5, 1960 Union Avenue, Memphis, Tennessee, 38104. You've got the address right there. The question was, who did, uh, what partner did Eddie have his greatest success with? Good luck to you. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> into the action here on Championship Wrestling in just a moment. Wednesday night at Evansville Coliseum. Brother, I'm telling you what, what a night that is going to be. Another one of those super world-class cards coming into the Evansville Coliseum for Wednesday night. There will be a return of the AWA World Tag Title. The belts, of course, were held up last week between the Midnight Rockers and the Rock and Roll Express. It was everything and more than anybody expected out of a match like that. And coming right back again. And this one with the belt 
belts held up, the Rockers won't go in there as champions, and that puts a little different picture on it. Marty Jannetty, Shawn Michaels going against Ricky Morton, Robert Gibson with the AWA World Titles at stake. And you can better believe that will be some kind of a scrap. That's not all the action. Uh, we're going to also have a grudge match with no time and no disqualification. That means throw the rule book completely out. Why not? That's the way they're battling and scrapping anyhow. Jeff Jarrett, superstar Bill Dundee, and they will be going at each other's throats and everywhere else. Big Max Payne is going to be there defending the CWA heavyweight title in Evansville against the raging bull Manny Fernandez. A little later with classic confrontations of 1988 and any year as a matter of fact. The Rock and Roll Summit. The meeting of two of the premier tag teams in the entire world. The Midnight Rockers who held the AWA World Tag Champions and the former NWA World Tag Champions, the Rock and Roll Express. That collision produced an unusual situation. Following the match, the belts were held up and it has been ordered a rematch to establish who will be the AWA World Tag Champions. Marty Gennetti, Shawn Michaels, the Midnight Rockers will go into the ring, but this time not with the You know, I don't know belt. exactly what's going on here. You know, the Rock and Roll Express We've told everybody for a long time, we respect those guys more than anything, but you guys are a thing of the past. The Midnight Rockers are the future of professional wrestling, and we are the AWA World Tag Team Champions. I don't care what these two guys have done all over the world. The AWA belongs to the Midnight Rockers. There is no question in anybody's mind who the AWA World Tag Team Champions are. It's Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty, not the Rock and Roll Express. You guys think you can come in here from wherever you've been and take what rightfully belongs to us. Well, that's not how it's going to be. The Midnight Rockers, like I said a thousand times, are the future of professional wrestling. And the AWA World Tag Titles are going to come back to us. And I'll tell you what, pal, I think you're the one. You never liked us hey, anyway when we were here. Listen, you I never liked us. Well, Lance Russell, you and all those people behind the Rock and Roll Express are going to be really upset when the Midnight Rockers prove that they are the premier tag team in the world of professional wrestling. Yeah, well, that's uh, from Sean Mike. Up. Hey, you'll have to go in there without the belts. The belt has been held up. Let's take a look now at the very classy team of the Midnight Rockers in action. Summit was an appropriate name when the teams of the Rockers and the Rock and Roll Express got together. We want to call in Robert Gibson, Ricky Morton, and say the coming meeting in a return match now has the belts held up. They don't go in as the champions. You guys don't go in as the champions. That's right, Lance, but you know what never fails to amaze me? 
how the Midnight Rockers come out here and say the AWA belongs to them. But you see, the Rock and Roll Express has been down many, many, many hard roads. But at the highway we took, brother, led us to the top, the top. Check our track records, brother. It'll show you all about the Rock and Roll Express. And just like you found out, there's nothing we can do to keep you from jumping on us. But there's a whole lot we can do to make you jump off, brother. So you let it recall. We are, and we're going to be, the brand new champions, the world tag team champions, AWA that is. And the funny thing about it is, Midnight Rockers, there's not a thing that you're going to be able to do about it. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about this week, when those two get together. Can you believe it? Again, a return of the summit. The Midnight Rockers, the Rock and Roll Express. Here they are, Ricky Morton, Robert Gibson, in action. Summit, the Midnight Rockers, the Rock and Roll Express, meeting to determine who will be the brand new AWA World Tag Championship team. Boy, what a battle it's going to be. Wednesday night, Evansville Coliseum. You make it a point to be there. Let's get back to our regular programming. It's going to be some. Okay, Davey, we're ready to go back to the ring, and the King is going to be right in there in action. Opponent for the King stepping up under the ring apron right now, Brother Ernest Angel, his manager I, I over. One thing there, Brother Lance. Apparently, you're trying to get on my good side, or you're calling him Brother Dave. It's catching, isn't it? Isn't it wonderful how it gets in your heart and moves? Oh, boy, you oh, just no. made my day miserable. That's all I can tell you. Oh, me. This is going to be a one fall. Ten minute time limit match. Introducing uh, Choir Boy number one. That's Tommy. Uh, he weighs in at 215, and the king, I think you know, 234 out of Memphis, Tennessee. This fall, one fall, 10 minute, uh, this match, one fall, 10 minute time limit. Jerry Calhoun's refereeing. Brother Ernest Angel is talking. <laughs> oh, whoa. King says, hey, you better stay out of this, or we'll see how fancy you talk with no teeth in your mouth. You know, the only danger about that, Dave, is if you get your attention right out here on Brother Ernest, yeah, there's somebody right. in the ring who can do something about loosening up a few teeth of yours. So Jerry, Jerry's been around long enough, but this kind of a guy, I mean, he, he will make you sudden sick, this Brother Ernest. And Jerry is hot. 
about him already, so he had to make some comments to him. Yeah. Needs to concentrate on Tommy, the choir boy number one, who's in there as opponent. Jerry feels him across the ring. Oh, yeah, the choir boy said he pulled the tights, he pulled the tights, and the referee said, did you? Jerry says, no, he didn't. I don't, know. I don't know the. Uh, I don't know. He was uh, being praised by Brother Ernest there. What an honest man, he's saying. Oh! Lawler right back. Right hand. Bang. And down the, on the ring apron into the floor. Go, what is this? Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hey, that's, that's not even a book. Yeah, we saw what's in the good book in there. Watch this guy. Choir boy number one, Tommy, is, uh, uh, yeah, referee checking Tommy over, but by that time, he had already made the handoff to Brother Ernest, and it was back in the good book. Back in the book, yeah. Yeah. You're right, Jerry is uh, concentrating a lot on oh. Ernest over the corner. Look out, Tommy using that right fist, cross top of the head. Jerry Lawler down on one knee. Fireboy picks him up, pounds him down again. The King finds himself in trouble here. Referee moving the choir boy back for using the fist. Fireboy reads back into the action. Deep in the midsection. Forearm across the back. Waller heading for the neutral corner. The strap oh, comes yeah. down and look out, Fireboy. Waller puts him into the rope. Upper arm coming off of there. Two and a half minutes gone. Head into the top turnbuckle. And Tommy, the choir boy, finding himself in some difficulty. Ernest over in the corner saying, uh, uh, take it easy now. This is not the way we want this to go. Down on the floor, it's choir boy number one. Brother Ernest there. Brother Ernest hollering, stop it. Oh, he wants him to stop the match. He this says, man's hurt. Said he threw him over the top rope. He didn't. His own momentum carried him over the top rope. All right, that is not a stop match. That's a count out, and the King wins it. Why don't you get up in here and take his place? Oh, now Lawler inviting Brother Ernest up into the ring. Yeah, I'll go for that. Match. Yeah, I will too, but I don't think uh, he's going to go in there. Yeah, no. He didn't throw him over the top. About, that's what I'm talking about and clean it up in wrestling. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, oh, yeah, well, I'm glad to know what you're talking about. The King comes out victorious. The time again, David? Three minutes, five seconds. 3.05. Jerry Lawler, the winner over the choir boy, number one. Timeout. We'll be back in a moment. about some of the action around the territory Thursday, February the 25th Henryville, Indiana right there at the high school you can save a dollar on the advanced tickets by getting your ticket in advance on both of these towns that's Thursday the 25th in Henryville, Indiana the other is Sunday, February the 28th at Sadowski Fieldhouse at Fort Knox, Kentucky 3 p.m. is the time on that one okay, here's the entire card for Wednesday night and what a card it is Terry Adonis goes against Scotty the Body gorgeous Gary Young will be facing Ken Wayne, the Nightmare. Then it'll be uh, that Samoan team of Samu and Kokina. Boy, they are big. And who has to face them? The Blue Denim Bruise Brothers. Raging Bull Manny Fernandez goes after the CWA heavyweight title with Max Payne defending Brother Ernest in the corner. Jeff Jarrett, Bill Dundee in a no time, no disqualification. And with the belts held up, the Rockers going against the Rock and Roll Express for the World Tag. I'm going to take a look at the big Samoans as they come in. This is the first time that we've had a look at them. And who is with them? Don't tell me Brother Ernest is Brother with them. Lance. Yeah. What can I say? I've got to tell you that, that my call over this wrestling network, the satellite network in which you have, has reached all over the earth. Has reached. I'm getting letters by the day. Wrestlers that want to join my calls, they say, Brother Ernest, 
We want to be part of you. We want to be with you. And as you can see, these boys from the island of Samoa, here they are. I sent after them. I sent the plane tickets over there. They're going to be under under us. And, 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 and the proof is going to be right here, Brother Lance, as always. As I, always. I hear it from Brother Ernest, Dave. I think we're ready to go. One fall, 10-minute time limit match, introducing at a total of 441 pounds out of Memphis, Tennessee, Ken Raper and his partner from Arkansas, Doug Dancing. And going against him at a total weight of 645 pounds from Samoa, the great Samu and the giant Kokina. Samu is starting for his team against Doug Ooh. Dancing. Well, we've heard about these guys. They've got quite a oh. reputation. Man, oh man, oh man, Goodness. look at that. Right off the bat, Doug Dancing picked up. He just turned him over, just so easy. Oh. And Dancing, while he is not a huge guy, look at that for a big guy. A standing drop kick, and I mean held him and fired it on him. There's a tag on, now you talking big. Here is a huge one. That's why they call him the, the giant, giant Kokina. Boy. According to the information, uh, Kokina weighs 360 pounds. If anything, I think that's right. This man is huge. That's from the waist down to what they're talking, 360. Good. Yeah, nice Looks to me closer to 450. I mean, yeah. it, 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 it's almost amazing how wide he is. He is just incredibly big. It's hard to appreciate how big the uh, great Samu is when you see him next to this Coquina. Look at this. Man, oh man, oh man, and dancing, I mean, absolutely smatter all over that mat down there. A little spinning back kick puts uh, Doug dancing. This is our first look at Doug, but I don't think it's a very favorable look, Dave. No, no, he's a... Uh, they're pretty good boys from a little bit of a while, aren't they? They're pretty big boys, that's for a fact, and they seem to know their way around the ring. Look at this. Double teaming. Oh, oh, my goodness. Ken Raper hasn't even gotten close to being tagged over there as Doug Dancing has just been absolutely overwhelmed by this team of the great Samu and the giant Kokina. Samu takes him out of there, pops him over and down, and tags back to his giant partner. Look at this. Oh, no. Oh, that's got to be it. Oh, boy, let's hope so. Man. Oh, two minutes, 16 seconds. Wow. The Samoans get an incredibly impressive victory. Oh, now they're not finished. Come on, they've won the match. And Raper thrown through the ropes. Now they're going back to work on dancing as if they hadn't beaten him up enough. They kept him in there the entire match. Uh, Kenny Raper was never in uh, officially in the match at all. Come on, get him. Come on, Ernest, get him out of there. And he'd throw dancing into the ropes, kick him on through down onto the floor. We got him out of there. Yeah, you got him out, all we, right. We want your guys out of there is who we want out of there. Get your guys back to the dressing room. That's what we're looking for as the giant Kokina and great Samu come out with a victory over dancing in Ken Raper. Raper never really was involved except, no. oh boy, what a classy little hand flip out of the uh, ring in there. Okay, the victory going to Brother Ernest's new team. We'll take time out. We've got more action still to go right here on Championship Wrestling. Jimmy Jack Funk and Ken Raper going at it. We've got a scheduled six man. I don't know how our time's going to run on that. But right now, coming out, Mr. Jeff Jarrett, who uh, is going to be involved. Uh, Jeff, good to have you here, partner. Right, I'm glad, glad you, to be here. I'm now. glad you may. I know, uh, driving over that ice and all that you drove. We, we've had a storm here recently. Ooh, boy, I'll tell you what, it really hurt our crowd today, and I don't blame them for not getting out. Hey. Uh, you got one coming up with Bill Dundee. Oh. This is it. I mean, I mean, let's face it, one on one. That's exactly right, Lance. Uh, it's come down to this, and I knew one day it would do this. Uh, let's take. I think he's sent an interview in. Let's listen. Oh to that. yeah, yeah. Well, we we got, got we got one from Billy. Let's take a listen. 
Man, I don't know what this world's coming to. Lance Russell says, I ain't going to interview Dundee. He tells Eddie Marlin, if he's going to go crazy, don't let him in my studio. Well, you can take your studio, boy, and shove it where the sun didn't shine. Because what you did to me last week was wrong. You and Lawler both sat there and watched me throw that fair-haired boy over into the fifth row of them people sitting there. And then you both said I never did it. Then he comes back, drop kicks me, and over I go, and all of a sudden, Jeff Jarrett won the Battle Royal. No, he didn't, brother. Just like you never won the match for the ring, Lawler, and that's really what's back in the back of my craw, Daddy, is you in that ring. Now, you, Russell, and everybody else around here has got a little conspiracy going to keep the superstar from getting you a ring. Because that's what it was, Lawler. When I beat him last week, it was you and me for that belt. And I was going to beat you for the belt, boy. Don't, don't think I wasn't. I was going to beat you for that belt. Then I would have had my ring, and it would have been all over. You and me could have been tag team partners again, beat up the Midnight Rockers or anybody else you wanted to beat up. But no, you had to agree with Russell and say that Jeff Jarrett won it. And all them silly little teenage girls, they're going to say he won it. They're going to sit there with a little training bras on and think that they're women and that he's a man and they're going to scream and holler and say, Oh, Jeff, you're beautiful. Ha, punk, you're a punk. That's what you are, Daddy. When I was running around the streets beating people up, you was crawling around on the ransom floor. And all them preppy little girls that you grew up with thought you was cute. Well, brother, when you walk this aisle this week, Jack, there's going to be me standing at the other side of it. And I beat you all over the building last week, up into the bleachers and back down again. I was having fun, punk. Well, the fun's over. I got you into this wrestling business, and I'm going to take you out, Daddy. Oh, I got to admit this. I have really got to admit this. You was a little tougher than you was two years ago when I got you in. But not tough enough, sport. Well, I'm just going to tell you something, boy. All them little girls will better come and give you all the support they can give you. And they'll better be screaming and hollering when you're walking down Nile, because they're going to catch you back this week. And that's a promise from me to you, punk. And then, Lawler, you know what's next. I want my ring back, because you cheated me out of that. Yeah. Dundee with that attitude of his. I don't have to tell you how tough he is. That's you know. right. I, I do know Lance, and uh, that is his side of the story. And, uh, you know, Lance, uh, he did say I've just been wrestling about two years, and I've had a lot of situations, and a lot of people talk about the, the different things that happened. But uh, this particular one, it seems like more people are coming up and asking about it. Uh, they're asking about uh, me and Bill, uh, how long this has been going on? To, Everybody said, how come you and Bill were never partners or rode up and down the road together or really, uh, I guess, call it friends, but uh, Bill Dundee has never liked me and I guess I've really never cared for him because it goes back a long way, back from day one. Uh, you know, I, I know that uh, he's, he, he's done a lot of things. He's been Lawler's partner. He's been Lawler's number one enemy. He's been that way with a lot of people. Yep. And, uh, it, they, it, time and time uh, again. I've had my problems with him. That's right. Uh, but uh, this week, I want to show you a little piece of film. I hadn't forgot this, but Dundee, you might have. I went by the production office and uh, put together a little tape, and let's take a look at this one. Okay, let's take a look at it right now. Sure. Now Landell and Dundee are showing what big men they are. Oh, Johnson, throw it over the top row. Hey, come on! Landell, it's just attacking the referee. That'll cost you. Jeff Jarrett refereeing this match, and Landell just landing. There goes Jameson out of the ring. Here comes Jerry Jarrett, Jeff Sand, and he nails Dundee. Nails Buddy Landell, and right back at Dundee. This is Jerry's son that was refereeing. Uh-oh, Landell got him from behind. And Dundee slams him with a right, puts him down on the deck. Come on, this thing's getting out of hand now. God, Dundee's going for his eyes, Dave. He's only got one good eye in there. Come on. got to bring back some bad memories. That's right, Lance. Uh, that was two years ago, though, Dundee. And a lot of things have changed since then, and a lot of things have come and gone. You know, you've been back about, uh, I guess, eight or nine months now. And I knew it'd come to this one day, and uh, I'm, I know that uh, you're a legend around this area, and I've grown up watching you. But it's two years. I'm not the same 18-year-old kid that you kicked around right in that very same ring. I'm not the 165-pound guy that you just wiped the mat with. It's two years gone by, and I know last week, I think it's a little indication of what's going to happen this week. Yeah, you know, you said that you put me in this, put me in this business, 
and you're going to take me out. Well, I'm not backing down from you or anybody else. Now, I know you're tough and everything, but I think we're just going to find out how tough you are. I know you're tough, but I'm not backing down from anybody. When I, Lance, when I believe something is right, I know he was wrong last week in this wing, in the, in the ring. I've you been, won the Battle Royal, exactly. no doubt about it. We're that's right, and that's, I, that's what I stand for, Bill Dundee, and I'll fight you or anybody else, brother, and we'll just see who the winner is this week. Okay, good luck to you, Jeff. Appreciate you coming out. We're ready to get back in the ring right now. Um, it's one of those situations that uh, Dundee gets something like that in his craw, and partner, uh, he just won't let go. Won't let it go. I mean, no, absolutely no. will not let it go. Ken Raper out here, and his opponent will be out here in a moment. He does not have a nifty, neat day's work in front of him because Jimmy Jack Funk, the big mm -hmm. guy from Amarillo, Texas, is exactly who he's going to be going against. We've got, as I said, a six-man tag schedule, and we'll have to see how our time goes, whether we're going to be able to get to it. Here comes Jimmy Jack. Dave? It's going to be a one-fall, 10-minute time limit match. Ken Reaper, 221 pounds out of Memphis, Tennessee, and 263 pounds from Amarillo, Texas, Jimmy Jack Funk. Funk. This match, one fall, 10 minute time limit. Jerry Calhoun, the referee, waiting to get things going. Mm -hmm. A raper is not a little guy by any means, but no. uh, Jimmy Jack is, as Dave said, 263 big. And watch that bell over there, boy. You don't want to get near that. Go time. Jimmy Jack Funk, heavy favorite in the match. He's the one with the experience and the reputation, for that matter. Ken Raper. Off the rope, takes it down to the mat. Ken Raper has been involved in a couple of monumental upsets on championship wrestling, so uh, Jimmy Jack Funk certainly can't overlook his wrestling ability. You know, Dave, we talk about the experience, and, and we're not talking about just in terms of years, because some guys, whoa, man, he whirled and blasted Raper into that That's mat. It. And that is it, what we're talking about. One, two, three, and absolutely buried him in that mat. Boy, he got him. 42 seconds was the time on it. Did not take him long as Jimmy Jack Funk gets the victory and now leaves the ring. Another 50 goes down. Okay, Jimmy Jack. A piece of Jimmy Jack Funk. I'm not a hard man to find. We got to take our time out. Uh, we've got that six man. We want to have some time for it. Be back in a moment. Okay, back into the action here on Championship Wrestling in just a moment. Wednesday night, Evansville Coliseum. Brother, I'm telling you what, what a night that is going to be. Another one of those super world-class cards coming into the Evansville Coliseum for Wednesday night. There will be a return of the AWA World Tag Title. The belts, of course, were held up last week between the Midnight Rockers and the Rock and Roll Express. It was everything and more than anybody expected out of a match like that. And coming right back again, and this one with the belts held up, the Rockers won't go in there as champions, and that puts a little different picture on it. Marty Jannetty, Shawn Michaels going against Ricky Morton, Robert Gibson with the AWA World Titles at stake, and you can better believe that will be some kind of a scrap. That's not all the action. Uh, we're going to also have a grudge match with no time and no disqualification. That means throw the rule book completely out. Why not? That's the way they're battling and scrapping anyhow. Jeff Jarrett, superstar Bill Dundee, and they will be going at each other's throats and everywhere else. Big Max Payne is going to be there defending the CWA heavyweight title in Evansville against the raging bull Manny Fernandez. A little later, we'll give you hey. boss winners. Yeah. I see all of that hair you got there, boss winners. Well, you got a six-man tag team match coming up here. This one uh, has the makings of a good one. We got the Blue Knights and Rough and Ready on one side at a total of 648. Plus, we had a total of 653. We got Nightmare Ken Wayne out of Memphis, Jeff Jarrett out of Hendersonville, Tennessee, and out of Lexington, Kentucky, Billy Travis. A match to the expiration of time. Six-man tag team action. Jerry Calhoun, the referee. Boss winners, by the way, over in the corner of uh, Rough and Ready and the Blue Knights. Here we go. We don't have a whole lot of time, but we got a little bit. And Billy Travis starts against the Blue Knights. 
Unite finds himself flying through the air. Billy Travis. Looks like he's ready to go here today. The Knight back on his feet, but Billy Travis is near the corner. Makes the tag on Nightmare Ken Wayne. Here he sends him into the rope. There was a double team there. You're right, boss winners. And the Blue Knight was almost pinned. Not quite. Two counts, all they got. That's a good team of Travis Jarrett and Ken Wayne. Uh, they can all go. They've all got speed. Covered by Jeff Jarrett. Well, we're just glad to have the action that we have today with the weather conditions outside. It has severely, in, has severely hampered our crowd. Just a few folks and some of the Hardys were able to get out for our championship wrestling today. And we're glad to have those folks here. We hope things are better for the rest of the winter and spring. And hey. uh, we have full house from now on, eh? That's okay. Spring is around the corner. That's spring right. just around the corner. I'm with you. All right. Got the Blue Knight against Billy Travis. You know, you mentioned this team of Travis, Jarrett, and uh, Ken Wayne. Very enthusiastic team. All of them, when they step into the ring, every one of them think they can win every time. With that attitude, you're going to win a lot of matches. Tag on the nightmare. Ruff popped over and down by the nightmare and gets only a one count out of him. Oh, oh, is there a difference? <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. I don't understand that either. I don't either. Ruff has his left arm wrapped up. Jeff Jarrett goes with a top wrist lock, forces it down to the mat. We've got about a minute and a half left in our time as uh, that old clock moving right on to it. And what a scoop from Billy Travis. Drops down with a knee on Ruff, makes a cover one, two, and Ruff is out of it again. He's a wiry, lean, wiry son of a gun. Ruff and Ray have picked up some weight since the first time we saw him. Too. They picked up some weight and they have uh, wrestled such a uh, fine competition over the last few months that uh, you can see some change in their style, too. Hey, he's pinned right here, looks like. Down at three. Yeah, Ken Wayne got it. Just as we were complimenting Ruff and Reddy, they find themselves with the shoulders on the mat here, yeah, and uh, they're out of it. Billy Travis, Jeff Jarrett, Ken Wayne get a fine victory here. Ken two minutes flying out. Pardon me. Dude. Two minutes, 53 seconds the time of it. Mm, 2.53, and flying off the ropes was Ken Wayne after the tag, and he ended up getting on rough the one, two, three, and that makes it official. Six-man tag. We'll check our time, see if we have any left. Be back in a moment. fact that we had terrible weather and kept our crowd down to a handful didn't diminish for a moment the action we had in there today, Dave. It didn't hurt it a bit. Of course, we got started with uh, huge Max Payne and his partner, gorgeous Gary Young, in here. They won their match. They defeated Rodney Napper and uh, Alan Reynolds in about three and a half minutes. Then we came uh, back with a single match, the King, Jerry Lawler, against uh, brother Ernest Angel's choir boy number one. Well, Choir boy looked pretty good there for a while, but he got the king a bit upset. The king came right back at him and beat him. So it was Lawler getting the victory here. The, this huge team, the Samoans, uh, the great Samu and giant Coquina. Uh, Coquina is, uh, as we mentioned during the match, is listed at 360 pounds. That, that looks at about 100 pounds light to me. <laughs> he, is, he is just yeah. incredibly big. And they did defeat uh, the team of Doug Dancing and Ken Raper. Ken Raper never uh, actually officially got in the match. First look at Doug Dancing, we almost owe him a letter of apology, I think, uh, as he uh, oh, really? really worked over by the Samoans here today. Then Ken Raper came back as a single and uh, going against Jimmy Jack Funk. Funk won the match. Didn't take him long either. 42 seconds was the time of it. And then a six-man tag team match in which Ken Wayne, Jeff Jarrett, and Billy Travis looked mighty good as they were going against the Blue Knight and Rough and Ready with Boss Winters in their corner. Ken, Jeff, and Billy 
got the victory in fine style, and that wrapped up another fine day of championship wrestling. No major upsets. Boy, I'll tell you one thing that I, I know that I'm looking forward to in this coming week. Uh, Lawler is going to be meeting Wildfire Tommy Rich. That should be something. Okay, we're going to get out of here, Dick.